Hey gearheads and welcome to Grouse Talk. I'm Corey and that is the latest iteration of Honda's best-selling car. That is the 2023 Honda Accord Hybrid Sport. And with an anticipated 50% take rate in hybrid powertrains in the new Accord, I'm gonna take you on a quick tour of this one, tell you if this hybrid's worth checking out. Stay tuned. It is springtime here in East Texas, and you know what that means? The pollening is happening. Yes, my car has been sitting outside for over a week, and you can see it is no longer black. It is a nice shade of pollen, and yeah, not very clean. And then looking over here at this Kia EV6, this has just been out for one night, and we already have a nice coat of pollen all over the top of this one, which leads very nicely into this week's video sponsor. Thanks to our friends at carcover.com, we were able to get a custom perfect fit car cover for my 2013 Chevy Cruze. They know it's important to keep your car protected. And what they sent me was their Gold Shield 5L car cover, which beats all its competitors for many reasons. It resists all types of extreme weather conditions, such as snow, and is 100% waterproof and water resistant. This is the ultimate car care cover for storing your vehicle and protecting it while outside. The soft fleece lining is sure to protect your vehicle's paint and finish while it is underneath. And this car cover was so simple to install, I was able to do it myself for the very first time in under 15 minutes. It comes with a couple clips for the front and the back and a lockable cable to secure it across the middle. So this car cover is not going anywhere and it will help me keep all that pollen out here in the springtime in East Texas. Huge thanks to carcover.com for providing us with this Gold Shield 5L cover for my Chevy Cruze. You can get one for yourself. Simply follow the link down in the description below and enter promo code GT Garage Talk in the coupon field at checkout for a discount off your first order. Before we get too far into this one, I do want to say a huge thank you to Honda for delivering us this vehicle to test for a full week to give you our impressions of. And while I've got the hood up and supported with a prop rod, I do want to talk powertrain. So standard uh, base Accords will get a 1.5 liter uh, four cylinder. We have the hybrid model. Again, Honda is anticipating 50% or more of the new Accords being a hybrid version. And that includes a two liter four cylinder and their hybrid drive system delivering a total combined output of 204 horsepower. It is mated to an electronically controlled, continuously variable transmission. So no gears, no real sporty driving feeling about this one. And we'll get more into that here in a little bit when I'm actually behind the wheel with it running. But all around, it is a very interesting package, especially here in the sport mode. We do get a or sport model, we do get a sport mode in the different drive modes. It's not the most athletic vehicle, but again, we'll get into driving impressions in a little bit. We'll say all fuel economy numbers start with a four on this one, and in nearly 400 miles of testing, we're averaging just over 41 MPG. That has included highway and city driving. Again, we'll get more into driving impressions here in just a moment. Closing the hood, we get to see Honda's new design language. It's been permeating all their vehicles lately. The new Civic has gotten cleaned up. Very pared down styling, I would say. Uh, we've seen it in the CRV, the Pilot, and now here in the Accord, which again is one of the most popular selling cars in America for the last 50 years running. Honda claims it is the best selling car over the last 50 years. I'm sure there are some asterisks along the way, but when you do look at it, it is a very clean and very simple design. Not a whole lot of sculpting going on in this one. And it's kind of love it or hate it. I've heard a lot of conflicting reports on what they, what people feel the design of this one looks like. Some people say it looks like a Ford Taurus. Other people say it's just too plain and boring. Other people really like how just plain simple it is. But you can see we get LED running lights up front, LED turn signals, LED headlights up front. It is very clean, very modern look up here. And then we get 
all of our uh, adaptive cruise stuff integrated here in this Honda logo, much like uh, Mazda was doing in their older models, but now um, Mazda is doing the opposite of Honda and doing a separate sensor elsewhere so that they can have a more bejeweled badge up front. But again, we mentioned the fuel economy being very good on this, very simple lines, but we do have some aero bits in this, allowing air to get around and just help with that overall fuel economy. Moving around to the side, you can see that this one has a very long hood, very long, very wide, very low hood, giving it a much more athletic, sporty appearance. Then again, I really feel like this one has, but again, we will get further into that when we are driving it in a little bit. You can see a very sweeping roof line that peaks right above the driver's head and then just drops all the way off to the back of the vehicle. Very interesting look, not too dissimilar from the profile of the Honda Accord it replaces, but when you pair it with all the cleaned up styling all the way around this, taking down some of the sculpting that have been on previous models, it is a much simpler design. And it really, I'd just say beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I think it's a clean look. I think it is a modern look. I think for the most part is very unoffensive, but it's also not very daring in its approach. I uh, recently spent time in the 2023 Toyota Crown, which is the Avalon replacement, which I feel took a much more daring approach in its design, whereas this Accord takes a more solid, uh, humble approach to its design philosophy and de design method. This being a sport model, we get blacked out wheels here with uh, Goodyear Eagle Touring tires. These are two 35, 40, 19 inch uh, rubber wrapped around these black wheels. I think it's a nice look. You can see we've got disc brakes all the way around. All, all told, it is a very interesting, unique look. Again, with this red paint and all the black accents of our sport model, it gives a much more sporty appearance with that contrast of red and black, which you know we really like here at GT Garage Shock. Coming around back to the back, again, you get that sweeping roof line that just tapers all the way off to the tail. But being a sport model, we do have this black lip spoiler here on the trunk, which gives a, a nice and very much needed, in my opinion, break uh, to that plunging roof line all the way back here in the back. Very large, very easy to see out of rear window. You can see in it quite well from back here. Very good visibility all the way around on this one. And then we get LED taillights, LED blinkers, and turn signals back here in the back. And then interestingly enough, so we had that big H Honda logo in the front. I feel like this Honda logo in the back is smaller than the one that was on my dad's 2003 Civic. It's almost comically small, but that kind of goes with how this car gets much smaller as you go back to the back of it. You can see we get a chromed Accord logo, but a blacked out Sport logo. And right above that is a hybrid. The only way to get the Sport trim is to go hybrid. Just an interesting note there. And then you can see opening up the trunk, very wide opening trunk, very easy to load things in and out of. That is our largest suitcase and my backpack, still plenty of room all the way around this. You can see these hinges do come into the cargo area. So that's just something to note when you're loading this up. And then we have a 60-40 split bench rear seat, but you have to release it from in here and then either push from inside the trunk to fold those down or go around the vehicle and pull them down yourself. No power trunk on this one, but you can close it very easily. That's enough for the exterior of this one. Let's move on to the inside and see what it's like in there. All right, before we get in this one, I did want to show you the key. Typical Honda key it is a proximity key. Very nice, very compact. I really like this. As far as proximity keys go, I'd say this is one of the best in the business just for its overall size and ease of dropping it in my pocket. You have lock, unlock, remote start, remote trunk release, and a panic button on this. So everything you want in a very convenient package here on the key. You do have a deployable actual key if this fails you, and it is a very nice one, but you can keep it in your pocket because it is a proximity key. This particular vehicle currently is set to lock if you walk away with the key on your person, but being a proximity key, you can unlock the vehicle by just touching on the back of the door handle here and pulling open. 
You can also lock it by pushing those lines there on the door. We'll note the back doors do not have anything proximity on them, so you cannot lock or unlock from back here. So in order to get your kid in the back, you're gonna have to at least touch on the back of the front door to get it open at first. But we're here to talk about the interior. Let's get in out of this cold wind and talk about what it's like inside. So you can see very calm, very quiet in here. Very well buttoned down cabin. We've got the 12.3 inch uh, infotainment screen here. We've got a full digital gauge cluster and because it's proximity, We've got push to start, so I just put my foot on the brake, push that button right there. And uh, because this is a hybrid, the engine doesn't start up when I push that power button. So it is still very quiet in here, and it is almost eerily so to the point where you wonder if it's even running. You can see we don't even get a tack here on the gauge screen. We get a power meter, and you can see we are in EV mode. So again, it's not running right now and there's nothing I can do by pushing on the pedal down here to turn the engine on. I can't rev it, I can't do anything, you know, fun or, you know, crazy like you probably would here <laughs> at the age of 35, 36, messing around with a vehicle that claims to be a sport model. But yeah, very interesting that I can't rev the engine. I've really got no control as a driver over the RPMs of the engine, but we'll get into that more here in a little bit. You can see we've got very clean, easy to read, read gauge cluster right here. And you can customize what is displayed uh, within both the uh, two circular displays here by using the roller dials on the steering wheel. So I generally like having power flow or range and fuel. And you can see we've driven this one at 372 miles and are averaging 41.3 MVG. Over here, you can scroll through a few different things on what you want on this side, but I've typically left it on the Apple CarPlay screen, which if I had something playing, would be displayed right there. Moving back, very simple uh, steering wheel here. This is Honda's corporate steering wheel. They've put it in things like the Civic. So very good, very typical steering wheel, not button overload here. We do have paddles on the back, but again, we'll get more into that when we're actually driving. It is leather wrapped, it's very soft, it's very nice, I like it a lot. The sport model does have two person memory seats for the driver. And then our window and mirror controls are here. We've got a lockout. Both of the front windows are auto up down, but the back windows are not. Interesting note, but at a vehicle that is priced right at 33.5, that's actually an oversight that I can just uh, let go. Moving over here to the large uh, infotainment screen. This is perhaps my favorite implementation of infotainment here recently. So not only do I get the Apple CarPlay home row of buttons right here, but I get Honda's home row of buttons right here, which are customizable. You can see I can press and hold and change what is shown here on the side. So I can go to the home screen of the vehicle itself, and that takes me through all of this. So if I were on Apple CarPlay and say on my music, or if I were on my podcast, in order to go back to that home screen on most vehicles, I had to go to CarPlay's home screen and then hit the branded icon to even get here. But now I can just do it here on the home, home row buttons here. Very nice implementation of this. And then I could go back to CarPlay either there or with my shortcut. Really like it. It's very simple, but very intuitive. On top of that, I can actually change how much of the screen is impacted by CarPlay. So with this little button here, I've reduced the screen to a more typical of what's in most other vehicles on the market today. It's like an eight inch display here, but then I get this customizable screen over here that shows me different information based on either what's playing, my power flow, which I as a nerd really like, or the compass. I, like I said, this is my typical screen right here. This is what I leave it on. Moving back, we've got interesting look, kind of an upscale look to what's in the Civic with this full width uh, air conditioning vent look. You can see it is actually closed off for a majority of this run right here between these two vents, but you get these nice little joysticks. And can we just take a moment to appreciate the ASMR factor of this vehicle? Just the clicks, that we get on 
practically everything in this vehicle it, it's just a very satisfying vehicle to click and touch and you heard might have caught on when i turned the air on that actually kicked the uh, gas engine on so now being that we are in ev mode sitting still it is powering that battery back up to full power you can see here the climate controls are very easy simple to read but they're not automatic they're dual zone but again they're not automatic climate controls or manual controls we do get three mode heated seat bottoms on the front seats up here so i like that very much too two usb c ports up here no wireless charging pad but that's okay uh, but we get USB-C ports and then very nice plastics and materials all the way around to this. Anything you touch in here definitely feels premium, even if it's plastic. So like these cup holders here feel very premium in their plasticness. You can see dual cup holders here that can accommodate varying size of uh, drinks and receptacles in here. And then your drive mode switch. We talked about it earlier. We've got normal, sport, and econ, and both screens display something just a little bit different uh, depending on which drive mode you're in. I've left it in econ more often than not because this is a hybrid. Even though it's tuned to be a sport model, I really feel like this is really best suited for great fuel economy. And then we have our EV button where we can practically use up that entire battery's worth of power before the engine kicks on if we're driving around sensibly at low speeds. Electronic parking brake and your park hold button for when you're at a stoplight. Very large center console, very easy to get into and you can see there is additional power in there. The glove box is damped and comes down very slowly. It's a little on the small side for a vehicle this large, but you can see it it's got a decent amount of room in there for a few items close that up and then the seats again i mentioned the front seats up here are heated uh, my driver's seat has two person memory uh, position with an exit mode so every time we stop it it actually moves back to make it easier uh, to get in and out i've put most of the nearly 400 miles on it i can testify to these being very comfortable seats on the long term i have not felt any fatigue and then the material on them is a very soft to the touch as well we have a standard size sunroof up here no big panoramic roof i think that's okay we get a manual shade as well there's something just nice about a manual shade that you can quickly open and close on a standard size sunroof and then you can see visibility out of the back is very good headroom up here for me at 510 is also very good and uh, i i can find a very comfortable seating position here again i've put a lot of miles on this one but we'll talk more about driving comfort here in a little bit when i'm driving let's see what that back seat is like all right moving into the back seat of this vehicle sitting behind myself at 510 We'll show you the doors open nearly 90 degrees. They open nice and wide for if you need to put a car seat in. If you want to see me put Tucker's child seat in, uh, be sure and subscribe to our family review, which will drop later this week. Sitting behind myself, stadium style seating. So I am sitting up above uh, the front seat up here. I feel that the hip point, the H point getting in this back seat is a lot better. You're not plopping down into the back seat back here. And then Again, like a stadium, I feel like I'm sitting up uh, and it's a, a good view. I'm not just staring at the back of a couple of seats back here. You can see sitting behind myself, I've got plenty of knee room back here. No map pocket on the driver's side, but we do get a map pocket on the passenger side. Very interesting omission here. No power, no AC, no nothing on the back of the center console. But again, you have to remember this vehicle costs 33.5. So this really is an affordable vehicle. It's giving you a lot of stuff uh, with these heated seats, memory seats, the Apple CarPlay that is wireless up there. This is a very good entry level into the very large family sedan market. You are still getting a lot, but you have to make some sacrifices along the way. And it appears rear air is one of those. So we have had this in relatively cold temperatures uh, for East Texas. That hasn't been a big problem. I'm just wondering how that would fare with us in the heat of a Texas summer, not having air vents back here. We do still have the vents up front and remote start, so we could cool this off. But again, 
Comfort back here is very good. Visibility out is very good. I have just a small view out of the sunroof up front. And we do have controls for the light back here. And headroom, pretty good headroom. There's a nice cutout here since we don't have a big panoramic roof or anything. I'm comfortable. I could road trip this thing for as long as the nearly 500 miles of this very small gas tank could take this vehicle. So yeah, I, I would probably have to pee before I would have any other uh, complaints road tripping this vehicle across Texas or across the country. Again, we've got Tucker's car seat in here, but we do have a fold down center armrest uh, here between the outboard seats. It does fold all the way to the seat bottom so it doesn't stay perpendicular uh, or parallel, sorry, parallel to the seat bottom. I always wanna say perpendicular to the back, but the back rest has a nice angle to it, so it wouldn't be perpendicular anyway. It works good as an armrest, but it is just a little on the low side. I wish they had put a stop to it to keep it parallel to the seat bottom, but that's really my only complaint back there. Again, no power back here, no air vents back here. A little on the barren side, but we still get our power rear windows. That's enough of the back seat. Let's see what this thing is like to drive. All right, gearheads, moving inside. We're finally gonna drive this. Love the mechanical gear selector here in this one. So many are going to dials and buttons and this and that and the other. I love me a good mechanical gear selector in this one. And then setting off to drive. You really have to be paying attention to know if the engine is on or off. But sometimes when it comes on, it's very noticeable. I'm gonna go ahead and leave the power meter up here on the display so that you can see when it comes on and when it goes off but it, it is fairly seamless in its interaction. Again, I showed you nothing I do with the accelerator pedal with the throttle does anything per se to the revs of the engine. Sure, if I floored it, yeah, it's gonna rev up loud there, but just in normal driving traffic, it really is using that battery as much as possible to achieve that over 40 mpg fuel economy number here on the sport. So I do feel like I had to talk about some of this gauge cluster while driving and not sitting in a parking lot first. I do really like the animation of the Accord there in the center console. If I'm using adaptive cruise control and uh, the lane keep assist and all the driver technology in this, you can see it puts a little road around me and it displays all the vehicles that it sees around me on the uh, based on all the sensors around the vehicle but these paddles here on the back of the steering wheel. Being that this is a sport model, you would assume that it has something to do with shifting through gears, but being that this is an electronic uh, continuously variable transmission, no, that is not what those paddles are for. They are for the regenerative braking. You can see here, this is actually not a tachometer. It is a power meter showing me how much power I am utilizing while uh, piloting this vehicle down the road and you can see I am letting off the gas right now it is using some regenerative braking but I can add to that by pulling this minus paddle here and just putting more power back into the vehicle this hybrid this gasoline powered <laughs> engine powered vehicle is the most EV like gas powered vehicle I have ever tested and that you can really dial up that regenerative braking. It makes a lot of EV noises too when you're driving it around. It really prefers being in EV mode more than having that gas, uh, gas engine powering the vehicle. And for the most part is a very simple, seamless, easy vehicle to drive, both in traffic and on long haul trips. This is the most EV gas powered vehicle. It's currently in electric mode. And if I'm really quiet here in the garage, you can hear the electric noise that is mandated by the government to let pedestrians know that there is a vehicle in motion around you, but when you put it in reverse, it gets even louder. If 
ultimately you are only buying the Accord for its roominess and its feel economy. I would say stay away from the Sport. It does make a few sacrifices like those wheels and tires in order to um, achieve a more sporty appearance, more sporty look, and that comes at the sacrifice of fuel economy. But I've noticed, again, in my testing, 41.2 mpg over 32, th 372 and a half miles. There, I'll get that out. Ride quality in this has been very good. It, it is a calm, comfortable, quiet ride, and again, that engine, sometimes in traffic, you'll hear it come on and whir to life, and it almost feels a little bit of out of control to you. But once you get used to it, you just kind of tune it out to the point where I've had to leave this power meter on to know when it's on and when it's off. This is happiest. This vehicle is its absolute happiest in stop and go traffic. It really does a good job. I was in downtown Dallas at five o'clock trying to get out of the city in rush hour traffic. And this thing was just a dream putting around town. It did use the uh, electric motor and the uh, battery power as much as it could driving around town and being stopped at a light it was not eating into my fuel economy so i really have been impressed with the overall performance of this as a commuter vehicle now we have to talk about especially with this being a sport model the fact that we only get a CVT in this one. It only comes as a hybrid as a sport model. And the Accord has kind of had a history of being a sporty, more enthusiast, driver-centric uh, vehicle here in the midsize segment. I, I do believe those reins have absolutely been taken over by the Kia K5 and the Hyundai Sonata, both the GT and the N. Uh, models of those respectively are definitely more fun to drive. This really is the practical vehicle. I mentioned earlier the price tag on this one, 33.5, which is just insane to me. With everybody going to SUVs and wanting big SUVs, uh, most people are shopping the CRV or the Pilot when they go to a Honda dealership. But if you really want a comfortable full family vehicle with plenty of space in the trunk that is very practical on long hauls that won't break the bank at the point of purchase or over its life of ownership, that would be this Honda Accord. This thing really is a steal. And I really can't get past that. That has been just a sticking point in my mind the entire time we've had this, is just how much car, how much vehicle you are getting for 33,500. These seats are very comfortable. Again, two person memory here on the driver's seat. Uh, they're heated and supremely comfortable. I I've not been disappointed in the overall time in this vehicle sure yes i would love something a little more sporty but that's not really why you buy a honda accord yes though that may be why you buy the sport model i'll just water under the bridge i will say everything in here again just feels very premium and feels very upscale i do have to note a couple things in this particular model i will say press vehicles do live a really hard life. Uh, journalists will really want to test out many things about them. And so even with 2,300 miles on the odometer, I don't know what this vehicle has been through. I do know it is one of the early production runs. So that could be a caveat to these two things I'm about to mention. One, the washer fluid reservoir is completely full, but does not work, does not spray wiper fluid on the windshield. So that's a little bit of a knock. I'm sure the Honda technicians at the dealership could take this and figure that out. And two is the steering wheel. There seem to be worms or something loose here in the steering wheel when we make big turns on this. You can kind of hear uh, something is in there that shouldn't be, and that is unfortunate. In fact, I've got a little bit of that for you right now. So aside from those two issues, I really feel like this is a very good car and would do a bang up job being your next family vehicle. Again, 
33.5, it's not going to break the bank. Uh, over 41 MPG, it's not going to kill you over its long-term ownership costs. And Honda's got a pretty good warranty and a pretty good reputation for uh, longevity. My parents had their 2003 Civic until very recently and have a 2012 Pilot that they've had since brand new and no complaints really with either other than wanting something newer. That is about it for me here in this 2023 Honda Accord. If you want to see what my family thinks of it, see what their thoughts are driving it, riding around in it, again putting Tucker's child seat back there in the back, be sure and hit the subscribe button, follow button, ring the bell, comment, all those things to let the algorithm know to show you that video when it drops later this week. You can find us on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube. All the things are at GT Garage Talk. You can read more about this vehicle and some of the things that probably didn't make it into this video by heading over to GTGarageTalk.com. As for me and the newest Accord, until next time, gearheads, bye.